you taught me and everyone else just so much uh, on the subject of what we live way more than any teacher has a teacher just throw the word gravity in my face when I have all these questions I'm like okay so every question I ask is going to be answered with gravity <laughs> okay well that's that's kind of lame but okay and then you know 35 years of my life I guess I was a globe earther because I didn't know any better and uh, I think that's when your video 20 proofs got recommended to me and the very first thing I, I did when I saw it come up I was just like get out of here I got <laughs> thing. I, I'm not this is ridiculous um and that was just my indoctrination talking I think you know and uh it kept popping up and finally I I, I said all right what what is this about and, and I clicked on it and then ever since then it's like what, what is this like this was unbelievable it was just one app of just things that I don't know if I ever thought like subconsciously or whatever, but I'm like, this, this, this is science. This is actual science, not just somebody throwing a word at me. Like you're backing up these, these claims, like, you know, these irrefutable evidence. And, um, it was an incredible time for me in 2015 mm. because like that just changed like everything. It really does. For people who say, oh, it doesn't change my life. I'm like, oh, you know what? Then go back, you know, put your head in the sand and continue being, uh, you know, ignorant, basically. Right. Um, and everybody who, who still believes in the ball, you know, they have, they, they know nothing about the ball. You'll come up to, oh, you think the earth is flat? And I'm like, no, I don't think the earth is flat. I, I understand and research that the earth is a stationary plane. And then I'll tell them about their model because they have no idea about their model. They don't know the measurements. They don't know the speeds. They, they don't know nothing. And then their best argument sometimes is when, when you say, um, where's the curvature? Oh, Earth is really, really big. I'm like, okay, that's a globe Earth uh, response. The flat Earth will be saying, uh, you know, all standing water must curve eight inches per mile squared. Like, that's a lot better than really, really big. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, that should be their response as well for right. uh, uh, an answer like that. You know, and the question, you know, the on a science test, uh, what's the physics of water? It, you know, it should be to curve eight inches per mile square, I would think. But it's not, the, you know, like you say, it's the fine remain level, like pour water anywhere. What does it do? Bathtubs, oceans, you know, lakes, ponds, uh, whatever. That's that's water. That's fluid. That's liquid. You know, how, how do we curve this? Like, oh, well, it has to be really big. And that's the only way it's going to work on a big scale. I'm like, well, can we see this big scale? We got, like, astronauts up there, don't we? Like, can't they show us these curving oceans? You know, can, can I please see a, an ocean, just a little bit of it actually curving like that? You know, like, <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, only on film. You can only see on it on film. film. Yep. Absolutely, yeah, uh, man. Only at a scale too big for you to recreate. And just like right. you said, and, and what's causing it? Their, their catch-all term for everything. Gravity. It's grabbing it. The gravity so grabs awkward. it. Yeah. yeah. Unreal. It, and it and people really just is, think yeah. that, that, yeah, well, it's too big, man. Well, why can't you accept that? Or, you know, it, yeah, it's at a scale that's too big for you to recreate. So what? So that the astronauts can do it. They can make little water bubbles in space. So believe them. Fish eye lenses curve the water. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the thing. People are so into living with their screens that they've forgotten that demonstrable reality is something you can do with your own hands and your own two eyeballs, not something that someone else does and you watch it through a screen. That can be manipulated, and it is and has been for so long that people think that these silicon magicians you know these black screen magicians are purveyors of truth when they're anything but these are the devices they use to lie to you and the thing that tells the truth is reality so check what they're telling you with reality can you demonstrate what they're showing you on the video and if you can't then it's not reality and this is what us stupid flat earthers are saying you know they they think that uh the shape of the earth is something that has been known for so long that to even question it is such a waste of time and so dumb sorry sorry to right. tell you guys that's not the case 
that's what they want you to think, and they've succeeded so well that you think intelligent people like us who are questioning this uh, are stupid. That's the main thing that you hear about flat earthers is how stupid we are. And I get a lot of comments saying, you know, Eric, after listening to you for a while, the thing that really started to change my mind was the fact that you're not stupid. After listening to you talk, you know, you're an intelligent person, you're smart, you can put words together, you do your research, you've written books, you make documentaries, you're not a stupid person. So why do you believe this stupid, th this insanely stupid thing and promote it for years and years? And they say, oh, you're a charlatan, you're making money. I give away all my content for free. Everything I've ever put out, you can consume that content, it's there. Uh, the only thing I make money on is books and I have to charge for those anyway, the paperback versions. So it's free. Meanwhile, NASA, $60 million a day, they're forced, you're, you're forced to pay them because it comes out of your tax dollars. So you, you got a, a company that makes tens of billions of dollars per year versus Eric that just makes a you know sustainable living wage and I'm the charlatan. I'm the, the person that they need to be worried about. And they're like, oh, all these hit piece videos. Where's the hit piece videos saying that NASA are the charlatans doing it for the money? None of these globe earthers have even considered that, but they think that us poor flat earthers living in our you know studio apartments or whatever we are, we're doing this for the money. Yeah, because this is a big <laughs> cash cow tell, telling yeah. you know 99.99% of the world that thinks this is the stupidest subject ever. It's a cash cow to, to try and make people think that the earth is flat. Now, dude, people don't want to hear it. They don't, like you said, they don't even want to click on the video. It's so dumb th that, you know, this is not something that anyone can do for the money. Um, but it's hilarious that that's one of the main things that I hear from these people that haven't even researched it a little bit. Like, you're a charlatan. You're in it for the money. Okay. And what about NASA, who are clearly charlatans and clearly in it for the money? No. Don't take away my ball. <laughs> yeah. How about all the times your channel got deleted? Uh, what was that? This is your fourth channel, right? Oh, my my YouTube, YouTube channel? YouTube. I'm on my fourth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is my fourth YouTube channel. A lot of people don't know that, too. They'll say, uh, if this was for real, you wouldn't have a channel. If this was for real, you'd have been banned a long time ago. It's like, dude, you don't know my history, do you? Just the fact that you can even sit here and say this is only a testament to my persistence and the fact that I haven't given up after they've tried to cancel me time and again on platform after platform. I've got a paragraph list you've probably seen that I copy and paste to everybody that comments this to me of all the places and times I've been banned. You know, I've been banned from YouTube three times and Facebook three times. I've been perma banned from LinkedIn. I can't get back on there banned from VK and uh, Reddit and, you know, all, all the normal sites that people are on. I've been banned from the, most of them at least once. And then I, the only way to get back on is either to change my name or change up my content. I can't upload half of my catalog, stuff like that. And But th that's how I've had to do it. And that's why I'm here. Not because they're not trying to ban me, not because I haven't been shadow banned to death, not because they don't have my subscribers removed from me constantly not because they don't get notifications from me constantly not because all these things that they do to try and get rid of me but because they still see me i must not be legit you're here on the internet still eric therefore you're controlled opposition otherwise yeah. you would have been banned yeah i was dude you don't know anything you don't know my history yeah but that's that's it you know being a content creator is like this. People have their own uh, ideas about you and, and what you've done and then they'll plaster it for you and then it just like triggers you and you either have to try and let it go and just let you know hundreds of thousands of people think false things about you or spend hours of your day correcting these assumptions that people make about you. And uh, depending on the day, I do either or. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's uh, amazing how um, the norm uh, picks and chooses which conspiracies, quotation marks, are okay to talk about. Right. Aliens, go up to somebody at work, hey man, aliens, oh yeah, aliens, you either believe them or you don't in school. Uh, Bigfoot, locked it, yeah, yeah, everything's great. Flat Earth, like, uh, kill them, kill them. Right. You know, it's Hollow unreal. Earth is fine. Earth can be well, hollow. 
Hollow Earth. Oh, Hollow Earth. People, oh, people yeah. are way more open. They're way more open to Hollow Earth than Flat Earth for whatever reason. But yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of conspiracies that are like approved now, like uh, Gulf of Tonkin. Now it's been it's been approved. Someone someone blue checkmarked it or something, and now we can you know of course Gulf of Tonkin happened. Like, oh, that was that was a false flag event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 20, 30 years ago, that was conspiracy theory crazy land, just like all the conspir crazy conspiracy theories people make fun of us for now. So yeah, conspiracy right. theories. You know what they are? They are news before news. That's all that is. <laughs> it's it, people think that yeah. people think that stuff that makes it onto the mainstream media is what's newsworthy. The the real newsworthy stuff is the conspiracy theories. Some of them maybe it, it's it's like uh, tabloids. Some of them might be wrong, of course, just like any independent media. Some of it's going to be bullshit, but. The independent media is also where you get the kind of stories that the mainstream media can never get because of who they are, because of, you know, their feet aren't on the ground, their head are up in the clouds and their towers. So it's the same thing when you're looking for true, you know, truther information, conspiracy information. If you're going to your highest sources, quote unquote, like Alex Jones, well, you're going to get a certain kind mm -hmm. of information. And, you know, some of it is actually better than your mainstream media information, but none of it is going to get, you know, down and dirty like some of your um, real on the ground truthers, people that are actually doing the work, not people that are in their million dollar offices having printouts handed to them all over their desk and just, oh, today, yeah, writers and AP. Right. It's not much How? different to, than mainstream yeah. media. Yep. And so fake, the way they act is just oh. so annoyingly just like be real, like this fake laughter, really corny jokes, just something, you know, like how me and you were talking and how your other guests, you know, talk, you know, it's just normal. It's just two people just having a conversation without trying to add on, you know, these just, you know, BS laughs and, you know, BS stories. Let's talk about reality. Let's talk about like actual things that are actually happening here, man. Okay. When I'm leaving the globe, that's fine. But you should look into flat earth if you are a globe. You need to know both sides. So you can, you know, choose what the hell you live on, in my opinion. You know, you can't go in a debate knowing just one or the other. I think you have to know both. And the people who want to believe in a, a globe probably never heard of any uh, actual facts of flat earth. They just hear it and walk away. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I know some people at work who won't even give it a, a second uh, thought. They just walk away. They'd be like, no, I don't want to talk about that. I have no time for that. Like, okay, that's cool. But the ones who do and are interested, you know, I, I they just are mind blown. Like the first 10 minutes of just talking to these people, like open-minded people, obviously. Um, and they're just like, this is unbelievable, um, what you're telling me here. And I introduce them to you and your channel and your videos. Uh, you know, obviously those are the best ones in my opinion. Um, I mean, everyone who's a flat earther today, like a popular flat earther today owes everything to you. In my opinion, I don't know if there was anybody before you that was talking, like bringing it out like this much, but like I said, in 2015, you you're the guy with all this knowledge and, and all and information and everybody started taking it from you and did their own things which is fine but when they start talking down to you you know it's kind of like hypocritical you know hypocrite so i mean this is the guy who made your channel grow and you're gonna say oh he doesn't play nice with uh others you know like david weiss you know um Jake Gibson, another one's just just kind of trying to tear you down, you know. And no praise, no thanks. Not that I hear from these these people. Why? I don't know. Maybe they're right. jealous. I, I don't. I really don't know. Yeah, my original YouTube channel uh, got terminated as well, um, where I did a video on Jake and showed like where he'd say, "I like Eric. Like Eric's the man." Like two seconds later, he's a shill. This guy's horrible. Unsubscribe from. Then go back and forth. You know, it's like well, which is it, dude? Like you know, make up your mind. So uh, 
he's all over the place. The football fans now with him unsubscribe me because they find out he's a flat earther, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Now he's going back to that. So mm-hmm. he, he's he got an interesting... Uh, but, you know, I like I was saying, though, but we were like a gang, okay? And we all had great content and everything was going well. And then, you know, it happens. Um, so today, like where Flat Earth is today, I mean, a lot of people are flat earthers i think you know i've come people come up to me and just say i said the word flat or something and the person would go oh like the earth I'm like oh mm-hmm. whoa like let's let's talk <laughs> you know it's it's oh, become a, a subject of conversation again like 10 years ago if you were to just bring it up it would be like what like i haven't even heard might, people might not have even ever said the word or heard in their ears flat earth but in the past 10 years, I think most people at this point, you know, we've made a big enough noise that most people, when you do man on the street interviews and you ask, have you heard, has anyone said the words flat earth to you recently? Have you heard that there's people believing that again? You know, the vast majority are like, yeah, yeah, my friend, my brother, you know, oh yeah, I watched some of those videos or yeah, it's flat. If you even get those responses. <laughs> yeah. um, someone just told me that, uh, 10%, I think, of uh, respondents in a French interview uh, said we're flat earthers, 10% of the population. So, I mean, the, it's it's growing rapidly, you know, so what what a lot of flat earthers would call rapidly versus right. what history what history calls rapidly are two different things. But I think, it, you know, it's going quite well as long as we can keep this steam going, um, you know, this reality movement is taking over right and it's great and um it's like i said it was real exciting times um we didn't have this you know when i was in high school there was no flatter talk in high school in the 90s for me um and uh, another uh so-called when people talk about the ship sailing oh no i'm sorry the uh, the mirage the roger center how uh, people are saying well this is a mirage right i'm like okay so then is this what we live on? Because every time we see the so-called mirage, the horizon is flat. Okay. Right. So I guess they live on a paper towel roll now. Because if it was a ball, we would see the you know twice the distance. If you look to left to the right, like you said, that's twice the distance in front of you, is it not? So where's that curve on the horizon? It's perspective, exactly. like you said. The ships are, are are going straight and just like a woman with a dress walking across a football field. If you put your head down on the grass slowly, her legs are going to disappear. Her dress is going to be in the ground. Is that curved? Mm-hmm. No. You know, so and you know, people just I don't know if they're not taking the time to to research these things or, or they just don't care. But you can't have it both ways. They want gravity to be both ways. They want gravity extremely strong to hold entire oceans on the bottom of you and yet you know a bird or a bug can just defy this force so uh, they want it really really strong but really really weak a helium yeah. balloon smoke you know bubbles just all these other things that could defy i could jump i could defy yeah. it for a couple seconds uh you know, but entire but, oceans and huge buildings in Australia, those are no problem for gravity. But yeah, right. smoke, smoke and helium balloons, like oh, gravity, you know. <laughs> gravity saw a racist, I think. Prejudice <laughs> there. He picks, he yeah, and you know, choosing. and you know what gravity, the funny thing is, you know what gravity is racist against? What's it? Light objects, light <laughs> objects, that, objects that aren't dense. Objects that aren't denser than the medium surrounding them. Object, uh, you know, gravity is re- really biased against any object that uh, is lighter than the medium surrounding it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I like that meme you had with the orange. You have an orange and water. Um, it floats. You take the uh, peel off the orange, and, and it sinks. So gravity again, it's picking and choosing. Ah, uh, do I want to pull down that orange with the skin? Or uh, ah, screw, screw, I'll leave that up. Like, right. Gravity likes to just, eat the orange with the rind, you know. Gravity's just yeah. boss like that. <laughs> it doesn't even peel yeah. its oranges. Gravity eats them whole. And if you try to peel your orange for gravity, 
gives you the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, the anvil and, and liquid mercury, uh, that video I made um, but two years ago, I think it was called uh, Reasons Why Gravity Will Always Be Just a Theory. Um, the, there's an anvil and it's in liquid mercury and it's floating. A freaking anvil floating in liquid. Mm -hmm. So the guy puts his arm and pushes down on the anvil and it goes down. And now it's touching the bottom of the bucket or bowl or whatever, lets it go and pushes back up. So a human's arm, a hand, is stronger than gravity. Right. It, it's just people need to just wake up to this nonsense. I mean, I could uh, pull down a helium balloon with my hand. Gravity can't. But gravity can't, right. Right, yeah. Bugs, airplanes. I mean, the whole curvature for the airplane, how it ascends, finds its altitude and just goes as to the end of the trip then descends so there's no is, is the pilot not you know every mile going down a little bit so it can go around the ball no gravity takes care of that everything oh, gravity takes care of all, all your problems and questions you know it's, but people how are like if the word gravity didn't exist how what would they have to answer these questions mm -hmm. we uh, a flat earther you could take away hundreds of words for us will still win the, the debate and argument you take away one word for them done done because their proofs are based on concepts like this they're based on theories whereas our proofs are based on demonstrations and things that you can do for yourself to find out whether it is the case or not and that's what they, they will use that try to use that against us and act like we're simpletons that we just believe our eyes and, you know, and our common sense and our experience and things that we can demonstrate for ourselves rather than believing things that experts and astronauts and you know people on video tell us and show us. It's like they're, they're gaslighting us into thinking that believing so-called experts on video is more substantive than believing our own eyes and experience and our own demonstration and things that we can do for ourselves. Like, how did, how did that happen? But it's, it is the case when you talk to most people, this is what you hear. They think that somebody with a PhD or other letters after their name on a television screen is way more tr trustworthy and way more correct than you yourself and your own right. personal experience and research. And you know, another reason is because it's way easier it's way easier to just believe a white lab coated guy on television than to take the time uh, and actually read books and, and watch documentaries and consider both sides of arguments and you know get into debates and try and figure these things out for yourself and actually make yourself into the authority. That takes too much work. I still got to go to work in the morning. So a lot of people, they don't want to admit it if you break it down like this to them. Um, but in reality, all it is is they're lazy. They're too lazy to form their own opinion. And so they're going to get what they think is an already informed opinion that 99% of society already believes in. So yeah, everybody knows the Earth's round and you're stupid. And why would I want to become the stupid person just so that I can say the thing that nobody believes, even if it is real? Because most people don't actually care about truth. For someone like you or me, truth is probably really high up on things that you value in a person. They're high up in the things that I value in myself is my integrity and my honesty and likewise in other people. But not all people are like that, you know, liars exist right. or even people that aren't um, overt liars. They just care about other things like money, for example. A lot of people, their main drive in life is money. And if they have to lie or omit certain bits of the truth, or you know have shady integrity to get more money then they're going to do it and those kind of people you know they don't act like they're untrustworthy or dishonest and you wouldn't catch them lying in normal situations but when you push them to the test in extreme situations you know uh, such as you know ch uh, asking them a flat earth question or you know whatever the case may be, you you often expose uh, inner truths about people this way. And for me, this, I've found that flat earth has become a great filter for friends. 
a lot of people that first become flat earthers, they mourn friendships that they lose and they're like, nobody wants to talk to me anymore. You know, I lost this friend, blah, 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 blah. But mostly they'll always say that, but there was this friend that's still with me and we have the best conversations now about flat earth and da da da. And and that's the thing is what you find is when you when you try to talk about a really fringe subject that you're super passionate about, say, well, if you've got just a fair weather friend, they're gonna look at you side eyed and be like, Oh man, this quote unquote friend has just lost the plot. But if you've got a true friend, you know, a true friend and not just one of these fair weather friends that actually likes you for you and is interested in the things you're passionate about and and learning or whatever, and they actually have the time of day for you and an open enough mind to sit down and listen rather than just instantly ridicule you, well, you just found yourself a really good friend and they just proved themselves through, through, through that act. So rather than, you know, how a lot of people come to me like, oh, flat earth ruined my life. Lot, they'll, they'll usually laugh afterwards, you know, they don't really think it ruined their life. But ostensibly, some aspects of their life did get worse because of flat earth. But when I talk to these people, you know, of eventually and, you know, always other aspects improved and they're glad to know the truth. I mean, who who wants to, to be lied to, you know, like uh, Cypher in the Matrix? How many people are actually like Cypher and how many people are actually like Neo? Because almost everybody wants to fancy themselves a Neo. They all think that that's how they would be. But would you? Would you actually? Or would you be like Cypher? And after a little bit of knowing the truth and seeing that it's not as glamorous as the lie that you believed for so long, would you actually rather believe the lie? Because if that's the case, then it's quite understandable why so many people say things like, eh, why would it even matter if the earth was flat? I still have to go to work in the morning. I don't really care either way. Because truth isn't really the main driving factor for those people. They don't really care what the truth is one way or the other. What they really want is money, like I said, or an easy life or, you know, a, a, a rich lifestyle like Cypher wanted. He wanted to be famous and he wanted to be rich and he didn't want to really have to do anything. And, you know, that's fine. But maybe that and the truth. And maybe if, you know, if one of them has to give way, the thing that gives way is the easy lifestyle, not the truth, right? right. It, so it really is a big, it's a filter. And I, I think it's valuable rather than being something that like, oh, I'm a closet flat earther and I don't want to you know, yeah. make waves and I, I don't want to lose friends and all this. There's a lot of those, yeah. yeah. I, just, I just find that um, I prefer being a out of the closet flat earther. It's, it's way better, you know? So for all you in the closet people, that knows, yeah. knows I'm a flat earther. I don't exactly. care what they exactly. think of it because I'm in, I'm in it for the truth. I'm in it for the, the research. I'm in it for the knowledge. I know way more than their model than they do. I know more, more about both sides. It's like, and I want them to, you know, learn as well to, you know, I want everybody to know, learn about the flat earth topic rather than just being ignorant and, and not caring. Learn about it at least so you can uh, have a legit conversation with somebody who knows their stuff on the subject. Um, and then you can go on your way if you want. But you know, the ones that don't want to give it the, the time or day, I don't understand. Uh, but like you said, you know, they. I had a guy uh, go to me, I'm like, what's your best proof? A stubborn guy, what's your best proof we live on this ball? of water hurling through space at 600 million miles per hour his answer was stars i'm like those that that means oceans are being <laughs> held and buildings are sideways and upside down by by lights in the sky okay how well you know they're there i'm like all right i can't i can't talk to you i guess you know if this that these are the answers they're giving me i just don't know what to say back to something like that and that's funny about polaris you know the North Pole star, like that's a stationary star directly above the North Pole, and it does not move. So you know how does that work if we're hurling and spinning and spiraling and you know 
all the same constellations, thousands of years or scenes. Just, I mean, you just keep bringing this up to them, and they're just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> get away from it, me. It does um, move. It just takes thousands of years, and you weren't alive then, because that's their excuse for that one. They've always got an excuse, you know, some some theory, some concept about why it works, but it's just words. There's never any demonstrable thing that you can do. It's always at a reference frame too far for you to recreate, or it takes too long like this. Oh, Thuban used to be the pole star 5,000 years ago. Didn't you know that? No, nobody knows that, including you. <laughs> and, you're, and you're just acting like it because you read it on Wikipedia or some right. you know, science, science textbook. That's not an observable, demonstrable facet of reality. That's just a little factoid tidbit that you remember from elementary school, and now you're regurgitating it like it's reality. And that's the main problem with all globe arguments, is that they are all like that. <laughs> There's not a single globe argument that holds water, <laughs> you know, pun intended. Right. Uh, <laughs> they, they think they're so intelligent because they can, like you said, regurgitate a book they read. And you know, a science book had theories in it. That should never have been. Our science books have theories. The Big Bang Theory, the theory of gravity. Why does our science books have theories in it? Can we separate that into a theory book? This is the right. theory book, and this is our science book. Don't mix them up, okay? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And you want you want to say we live on a ball of water or a pair of water and a blade here? That's another thing. They keep saying round. These globe earthers, we live, it's round. Look at those round planets up there, flat earther. I'm like, where? Where are these round planets? And then they'll show you some CGI. Look at my science book. See, Eric, there it is. They wouldn't lie. And uh, uh, computer generated images are a huge thing in science books. And then when somebody busts out a P900 or P1000, you zoom up to those luminaries. Now, what do you see? These crazy different color lights shapes just going berserk okay that doesn't look round that doesn't look spherical it's uh it looks like just a crazy light show up there and it doesn't and, look like terra firma either it doesn't look solid like something you could land a spacecraft on like like they seem to claim most of them are right and they love the word round they can't even use their correct terminology mm -hmm. you know call it a sphere call it a ball Call mm -hmm. it Neil deGrasse Tyson will call it an oblate spheroid pear shaped um, planet. You know, they don't know any of this. We have to teach them this, yet they'll still call us ignorant and stupid. And that's another thing. All your uh, haters out there, like Professor Dave, all these um, Simon Dan, just the name calling, name calling, F this, screw that, moron. Like, what kind of intelligent conversation is this that we have here you can't just call this guy an idiot and say i won the debate mm. i used more swears and, and called you more names so therefore i win so mm -hmm. you're just making yeah. yourself look really ignorant foolish it, it's, it's not somebody i want to associate with or, or even That's hear your side of the globe you know like show me make a video called 200 proofs earth is a spinning ball of water Show me that video. <laughs> and, you know, good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if they have 10 proofs. That's the most I've ever seen collected in one spot is a, an article with, with 10 silly proofs that the Earth is a globe. That's sad. Uh, all of them sad easily that. debunkable. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, like you said, most of their quote unquote proofs are straw man arguments like uh, talking about the stars and the, the planets. It's like we asked, what's the shape of this down here? And they're like, look up there. Right. Look, look there's a circle over there. It's like, no, 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 stop, yeah. stop looking up. And they're like, no, look, look. And you're like, you're like, look down this. Yeah. What's the shape of this? The best way to like, learn what's uh, what's down here is to look up there <clears throat> it's it's tantamount to having a contractor come over to your house and you ask them to measure the dimensions of your floor and they go okay take out their tape measure and go to the recessed lights in your ceiling <laughs> and they're like yeah six inches three inches and they're like yeah uh 
<laughs> your floor you is six inches by three inches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... I don't Dude. care what the lights up there are doing or shaped like. Like, I, my whole question was down here. Could we no. could we do some experiments and demonstrations that find out what the shape of this is? Right. They don't even see that. They're just they've been so indoctrinated into the idea that <clears throat> that those lights are planets, and beneath your feet is a planet. Therefore, what what you see up there must be what you see down there. When in reality, all they did was take a T on the word plane and go, oh, up there, planet. Down here, there's no T. You look at the horizon, you can go as high altitude as you want. You can zoom in as far as you want. There's no curvature. It's flat. So this whole idea that they've got, it's been indoctrinated into them. Nobody has experienced it. They just believe it. Right. A lot of beliefs. Um, that's all they really have, um, bloggers, is beliefs, you know. Um, I, I just want to hear one really good fact that they got. So now you're asking that. I'm like, give me your best punch. Give me your best proof that we live on this globe. And the like, pictures, I'm like, oh, here we go. Oh, boy. It's like, all right, show me the picture. Yep. NASA admit these are computer generated. Like, what else you got? How about um, astronauts? A Z, I don't. I can't find one YouTube channel that has an astronaut um, that has like a live stream. In other words, so they'll go, "Hey guys, you know, super chats," and uh, okay, I'm going to show you all the debris of these broken satellites out here. Here's all the hundreds of satellites orbiting Earth. There's this star over here, like you know, he's floating out there in space, like never nothing. We get. ISS live stream of the stupid half circle they got, a little blue water, and never see continents ever. No stars, no satellites, no debris. This is like lame. No 360, no 360 panning of the camera ever. Right, ever. Everything. All it would take would be a GoPro, right? Just some astronaut could take a personal GoPro and just for his own, you know, but of course not. Because <clears throat> yeah. it's not even happening because they're not out anywhere but a, a exactly. studio. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Underwater um, um, pools, you know, doing yep. a lot of stuff. People catching the air outside. bubbles. Right, yeah. right. They yeah. do the outside stuff in underwater pools. They do the inside stuff with wires and green screens or occasionally in uh, zero-G planes. That's it. It's, yeah. it's Hollywood. I mean, that whole movie, Gravity, with Sandra yeah. Bullock, <clears throat> it was filmed in a studio with green screens and wires. And it is an excellent, you know, production. And so why would people think that NASA would be any different or, or would need to be any different? You know, it, right. it's definitely a lot more difficult to have an actual ISS and actually land people on the moon in that ridiculous craft they made in the 60s. It's way more difficult for that to be a reality than it is to just fake it in a studio. And people have been faking it in Hollywood studios for the entire time that NASA has been around. So why are people so flabbergasted, you know, that they could be lied to by these these same people? It was pictures of like Werner von Braun and Stanley Kubrick walking together, hanging out. <laughs> nope, doesn't doesn't ring any bells, doesn't cause any red flags. That's fine. That's normal. Yeah. Ask any globe earther if they know who Gus Grissom is, you know. Mm. They don't know that name. They know uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Tom Collins, and uh, those are those guys. How about the guy who they uh, killed and fried in one of those things, you know, hung a lemon off of it, saying we're never going to go here, we're never going to do this. He goes, he's dead. You know, right. they don't know that stuff because they never, they don't research. They don't want to research. They're lazy, like you said. Um, they don't, they don't want to be the crazy there. conspiracy theorist. Right. Morons. Not, you guys are morons. But how are we morons when we know more about your model and, and things like this than you do? That doesn't make any sense. Even if we were wrong about the shape of we still know more about it than you do. Um, if, and, if, and social status, if social status and social approval is more important to you than actual truth, then you're going to go to that side. You don't want to research crazy conspiracy theories so that you can be the crazy guy that is lowered in your social status, right? You don't want to do that. So most of your extroverted, uh, money-hungry, status-seeking uh, people, 
they're gonna not go down this road and they are they're the ones that are gonna try to shut you up or or you know cancel your friendship because of the fact that you're leaning into the truth more than you know fitting into popular society because it really is that's a divide i made that video called the two types of people on the flat earth it it really makes this divide because when you find out that 99.9% .9 of the population are completely deluded and wrong about something so fundamental, you either have to break out of that and become one of the 0.01% of crazy weirdos, or you have to bury your head even deeper in the sand, the more so when you got, you know, friends like us hanging around you and constantly planting seeds. These people are like running away from the truth, just trying to hang on to their delusion that they've been living for so long. So you got both of these things coming to a head um, <clears throat> more and more. So I've seen it in the past 10 to 15 years since like when I when I first came into this conspiracy information, like when I wrote the Atlantean conspiracy versus now. Conspiracy theories, quote unquote, and conspiratorial thinking has become way more mainstream because us us few fringe weirdos have been doing the work and trying to get it out there and we've made it so that it's way less fringe as like we've been talking about there's a lot more people that have heard of flat earth now there's a lot more people that know that these conspiracy theories aren't theories this this is the reality and it's the news that's lying to you isn't that interesting how convinced they are, like you said, by the whatever mainstream news or the mainstream version of reality is. It's like, yeah, of course that's real, and they'll defend it to the <laughs> death. But then if if some lowly person like one of us comes along and gives actual evidence of things they can test for themselves and they can actually prove it, no, that's crazy. Right. So like, wow, why are not the news? Why You're not a TV screen? <laughs> yeah, you know, why are you so easily accepting of information in that way, even though the information is untestable and and uh, actually, and if you did try to test it, you'd find out it was wrong. Meanwhile, the other kind of information that's coming from boots on the ground, your friends, you know, me and you, this is what I've found. You, you'd rather, you know, call me crazy or whatever and defend the TV screen, you know, like you don't know yeah. these people. What are you defending? Why are you causing a rift between us for no reason here, just so that you can, you know, think that you're so right about what, what the expert on the TV told you? People right. are real into that. It makes me seriously consider whether or not some people are NPCs. <laughs> like, does everybody have the ability to critically think for themselves? Or are there some people that are like programmed like robots and they just don't have that inner ability to decide and think for themselves and instead they just go on whatever consensus reality is and that's their like program that's their reality and yeah. that's how they live life and if there are people like that well then that's pretty much the definition of an npc it's it's yeah. you're a non-player character in this reality you and, and i think in some ways we all are but some of us evolve or develop out of it so like i think at, at first, say, all humans are NPCs. Uh, Rupert Sheldrake calls it morphogenic resonance. The, the idea that there's some kind of intangible script or blueprint for human and palm tree and, you know, uh, pumice stone and every other kind of thing in reality, there's a blueprint for it somewhere. And then we are all just iterations of that intangible blueprint. And that's why things happen like the hundredth monkey effect, where monkeys on a whole different island um, that have never been taught to do certain activities, they pick up on it from the ether because uh, monkeys on, a, on another island have done it. Or they've done experiments with humans and crossword puzzles, for example. You give humans a crossword puzzle that half the world has already solved the day before, and suddenly your control group, um, their ability to solve that puzzle goes up like 20%. Why? Wow. Because it's in the ether of humanity now, the answers. So there's, so this is an idea called morphogenic resonance. And my 
addition to the idea is that I think, yeah, there's like this blueprint for humanity and it builds not only our physicality, our bodies, but also our, our internal structure, our consciousness and our mentality until birth maybe. And then we start having new experiences and slowly we individuate. And what I would call individuation is the process out of being an NPC. And what is individuation? But anytime you say no, or anytime you rebel against whatever consensus or mainstream reality is, whatever everybody else is doing, anytime you have a self reflexive thought, an introspective moment, and you decide, I'm not like that, I'm different. Right. I'm I think this way, I decide this thing. That begins the process of individuation. And that takes you out of being an NPC your whole life. But some people have never done that or have barely done it. And and if you're still at that stage, then I think you become or, or you still are like we're saying. And rather other people like us have become individuated. We've stepped out of the stream of NPC-ness, the morphogenic, you know, default stream of humanity and become something different, something that doesn't agree with that, that doesn't follow that stream. Right. And that's really valuable, you know, the, yes. to, to be a rebel and to say no and to stand up for something against all odds or, or whatever, like that's commendable. If you, as, I mean, if you do it for real, if you're just trolling or whatever, no, but which is what a lot of people think I'm doing or whatever, because they don't want to admit to themselves that something so huge could actually be a reality. And all these people are serious. We're not trolling. We're not charlatans trying to make money. You know, you know we're, <laughs> we just found a ridiculously deep and well covered up truth. And we're trying our darndest to let everybody else know. <clears throat> I think if you wanted to uh, make all this money, like everyone says about you, you'd have um, these live stream videos every day, daily. So everybody could be like, you know, super chatting and all this stuff. Like, I don't think you've done one of those. No. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't have super chat go, turned that, on. That and... proves that wrong. I mean, uh, and, and all your stuff is free. Like everything I've learned from you is is free. You could. You know, read a uh, landing conspiracy, uh, your YouTube videos, you're on Facebook, you're, you're like everywhere, you know. Um, so that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they would say that. Like, yeah, we just want to, uh, you know, spread truth and certain people enjoy it and others don't want none of it. Right. And I, I, I think it's just as simple as that. And these people, eventually are going to have to come to terms one day when we take over and we're the majority they're going to have no choice but to say oh, okay well if everybody else is doing that then okay now i'm a flat earther i needed mm -hmm. everybody else to do it because that's a type of mind i have mm -hmm. i have no individual thought and as far as people saying do you believe in a god do you believe in a creator are we an accident and the best answer i can have for these people is yes we are intelligently designed number one because our bodies are so perfect my finger isn't growing here my eyeball is not underneath my ass you know uh my ear isn't just hanging off here you know it's like this is purposely perfected you know and if anybody can't see that i, I don't know how else to you know, explain that to them. Like you could move, you could run, you could smell, you could talk, you could think, you, you could hear. It's just that's an accident. Mm. This is all just an accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was nothing, and then boom, there was everything. And you don't need any more evidence to understand that. Yeah, there is something that we don't know that's way more powerful and intelligent than we ever imagined. We can't even exactly. comprehend how incredible this is. Right. You know? um, so there's really no question is if there's a God or, or intelligent, you know, designer, it's just, it's, the proof is right in front of you. Look in a mirror, you know, like, <laughs> there you, that's you, there you are. I mean, what created you? 
my mom and dad created me. Okay, let's go back. Who created them? Well, their mom and dad. Well, who were the first human beings then? It's like, oh, uh, Adam and Eve. I'm like, no, we can't talk religion. We want to talk science here. So no one will ever know that answer, I don't think. Um, you know, that's, yeah, I don't know how that works. And then how everybody's like, oh, we evolution we came from monkeys. Like, no, we didn't. There's still monkeys here. Like, did they <laughs> not to evolve to humans? Like, ah, eh, you guys aren't really my thing. I'm just going to continue staying over here. You know, the fish somehow jumped out of water. They grew lungs now. It's uh, such nonsense, man. People, but hey, that's what the science book said, Eric. Look, chapter <laughs> six, evolution is right there. It's like, yeah, I could write a book. Are you going to believe it? Oh, my God. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe we somebody should do that. Take everything in, in high school science book and college science books, take out all the theory stuff and leave the science. <laughs> and get all irrefutable evidence, observable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, kids, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you might have like a, two pages, like who wrote it. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, Talking about that uh, made me think it's kind of like weird artificial intelligence because and through that we can posit that there's a real intelligent thing somewhere out there beyond our ability to even know but we're just programmed we're just this lowly ai because that's what makes sense to me because like you said the, the entire world our bodies you know the, the way food works from a seed and it grows and becomes a fruit and you eat it and excrete the seed and then the seed goes in the ground and then you get more fruit like you think that all happened by accident and how good wow. it tastes and smells and, and looks the yeah. colors like everything the whole process you think that's just it's random? an accident like, eric it's just an come accident. On. randomness doesn't look so ordered like this is this reality is way too ordered uh and yeah. way too beautiful and connected uh, for it to be, you know, random, like they're trying to tell us it is, and for there not to be some spiritual dimension. But beyond that, we can, we know that we're intelligent, we have a level of intelligence enough to be self-reflexive, and we can know through that, that there must be something intelligent and purposeful, powerful beyond anything we can even conceive that created us and the entire world or universe the entire experience we're having there has to be some being and another crazy thought is that being in a way could be slash is us it's really an aspect of ourselves how could god quote unquote be some higher being outside of ourselves that creates us and and we are completely separated from that being. How could that even happen? We have to, in some way, be a part of that being's consciousness, a part of that being's physicality, if that being has physicality. Whatever it is, we can't be fully separated from that thing. So in some way, we are a subjective packet of the objective, omniscient, omnipresent creator, whatever you want to call that thing, the thing that right created us all the purposeful intelligent creator and right. and so we know that we know that that exists that that has to be the reality but we we in these bodies in this brain it's like like, like a transducer maybe that's giving us a subjective experience and making it so that we can't know all of reality which is what we would know if we were out of this body and part of the oneness or whatever you want to call it, the thing that creates all um, and that may be what happens when we die, is we get to return to that and then we come back into bodies and it's just uh, coming back and uh, back and forth. Um, that would be our true intelligence. That would be the real intelligence that exists in the universe. And all of us, humans and animals here prancing around, we're artificial intelligence. We're dumb. We don't even know where we came from. We, 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 we can posit God, but we can't know anything about it or how it works. You know, how, how do I, can I create a, you know, a, a badger? How do, can I manifest, can I manifest a coconut right. tree? Like, yeah. no, none of us can yeah. do that. So, right. so that there is something beyond us that's so incredible and we can yep. 
know it intellectually, but can never reach it intellectually. Right. So in that sense, we're just this dumb artificial intelligence just going along to get along here in this created reality that we know nothing about. We don't know where we came from. We don't know where we're going. Most people think they're monkeys on a spinning ball. Like People are so far off base from what reality is that even someone like myself that I feel like I've spent my entire life trying to figure out this reality, the best conclusion I've come to is what I'm telling you right here is that we can know that there's a creator being and it's probably somehow connected to us it's partially us but now we are in a simulation or an ai or a maya an illusion an illusory physical reality that hides us from that that oneness that that higher consciousness and here we're in this lower consciousness this subjective consciousness in this created realm where it's just a game, it's just a, a stage, it's a play where we get to have individuated consciousness and all interact with each other, rather than just being the one almighty know-it-all. Because what is that, you know? After a while, what would you do? It's like, oh, I know everything, I am everything. Right. I, <laughs> I can do I everything. Yeah, yeah, because the one thing you can't do is not be you, but you can. And how do you do it? we're doing it like, like that that's that's that makes perfect sense to me it's like if if that being exists and it has to well then the thing it does is exactly what we're doing right now it separates itself into subjective packets that can experience a world that it created and isn't that exactly what we all do every night when we dream so we're always oh, yeah. doing that we're always creating little subjective consciousnesses. Oh, some person I've never met, some stranger here in some building I've never seen in some country I've never been to on some, you know, far off galaxy or whatever. These are all just, we're just creating these out of our imaginations every night and living them. And while we're in them, we think they're real. And if you didn't oh, wake yeah. up to your, to this reality the next day, and instead you woke up to that dreamt reality of yours every day, well, guess what? Right. I bet within two, three days max, you would be 100% convinced that that was your real life, and you would this this life would fade into a glimpse, and you wouldn't even remember it, just like every other dream. I mean, I don't remember dreams for very long. <laughs> if if my new reality just presented itself suddenly, like oh, I'm here now, and then this reality I've known for 40 years just ceased to be, how long right. before that would fade into you know, the the way all dreams do. And that, that could be what all lifetimes are like. You know, you, we could be every person that ever existed. We're just, right. you know, I could be you. I'm just not experiencing you right now. Right. Temporally. Temporally <laughs> speaking, the entire universe, everything that we're ex experiencing could have already happened. And now it's like a DVD and you just okay, I'm going to be Frank today, and then you get to experience all of Frank's life. But you don't know that that's what's happening. In other words, all of reality could be determined, and you don't have any free will whatsoever. You think you do, and you flip a coin, and you decide to go right instead of left at the last <laughs> second, and you think that that was your free will choice, but you can never know if that was your free will choice. You might have been determined to, to pivot like that. Right? That's wild. It's a, it's a question in philosophy that's been around for thousands of years and it's never gone away and it never will, just like the God problem and so many other problems of the human condition because, like we're saying, there's things like this that we can know. Like we can know that we weren't randomly created in a big bang explosion because physical explosions can't create consciousness and you know all, all the order that we see. So we can know that it must be ordered through an intelligence, but we can't reach it. We can't, right. we can't right. conceptualize it even. Yeah, the, the, yeah, we can barely talk about it. Right. <clears throat> but it's there. It's, it's probably the most real thing that exists, is this thing that I don't even want to give a name to it because that'll ruin it, and trying to conceptualize it ruins it. But whatever this thing is that I'm trying to talk about is probably realer than you and me sitting here having this conversation. Right.
dreams are incredible. I, I, I dream a lot, almost every day. I've had I've dreams where they come true the next day, sometimes a year later. Um, I have just unbelievable dreams. Uh, I once I was somewhere in a cave or something, and there was all these uh, different language. I don't know what it was. And as soon as I woke up, because I'll know I'm in this dream and I cannot wake up. I have had tons of those. So I'm like, okay, remember this. And as soon as I woke up, I go online and I typed in what the first two um, words I I remembered. And it said something like evil. It was really <laughs> evil, which was kind of freaking me out. I'm like, well, that's not good. So <laughs> how did I, how, where was I? How did these words come like, cause reading words is, is not normal in a dream either. It's hard to mm. make out words, I think. That, mm. that was a rare one for me, but you know, I had dreams just, just that they come true, man. It's really freaky, like deja vu for people. Uh, I, I did this before, like what, like, what is this feeling? Like, you know, it's can't explain it. It's real, it, but I, I don't, the people who, who could say like, oh, well, this is what your dream meant. Oh, you dreamt about fish? Oh, this is what that meant. Like, how do they know mm -hmm. exactly what a dream could be? You could have an idea, sure, but no one ever could truly know. Like scientists, for example. Oh, the science, you're not a scientist. Like, you don't know what that sun is. You don't know what that moon is doing. Scientists know that. Like, but scientists are human beings just like me and you. So what gives them this free pass? Oh, well, they studied in colleges. I'm like, yeah, they got a curriculum. Okay, big deal. They 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 regurgitated like a parrot. Like so, what? They don't have. You're not allowed to have free will to pass a, uh, a test. You have to do what uh, their answers to their questions. And if you don't, and you choose to be different, you're going to be marked wrong. And you're going to fail. So these scientists we have today are what? They're, they're independent, you know, scientists with their own thoughts of what the sun is. No, they all agree what that sun is, what that moon is, what those stars are. Um, but in, in my opinion, no human being will ever understand truly what that sun is, what the moon is, what the stars are. That's the creator's um, world. We just live in it, in other words. So when you open up a, a science book and it's, oh, well, that's what a star is, that's what the sun is, that's what the moon. End of the conversation, write it on my test, I pass. That's it. You know, you know what about if this person has a different idea? You know, it's wrong. Why? Why is it wrong? Because he says if a, two different people, two, two humans, one's a scientist, one's a not, you know, you make way more sense than the scientists out there. Like the way the geocentric uh, model, how you explain it makes sense. The heliocentric that we were taught in brainwashed in school, no sense. Like that's stupid. <laughs> it's like, um, like, like, how do we know it's a shadow on the moon? Like, why can't it, why can't the moon just be doing what the moon does? Like, oh, well, how's that moon lit up? Obviously the sun has to light up the moon. Like, well, what lights up the sun then? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the sun is its own light source. Like, why can't the moon be its own light source? No, it can't, it just can't. Like, why? <laughs> like, well, have you ever seen the backside of that moon? You ever seen the sides of the moon? No, no matter where you go on earth, you're never gonna see it uh okay so how do you know there is a backside of the moon well we don't we have to take <laughs> people's words for it scientists words for it. human beings words for it i'm a human being can i have my own reasons for what's going on out there no you're nobody <laughs> you know it's like well i i don't agree with that but i have my own ideas and i'm you know i'm gonna do whatever makes sense and if I could see the other side of the moon, like, yeah, then that is a, a ball because I could see all sides to it. Nobody can see that. So why, how is that proof that's a ball? Mm -hmm. There is none. Same thing with the sun. Like, how do we know that's a ball? How can, it can't just be just a, a disc. We don't know. Right. Star, same thing. Well, those are planets. Oh, you think Earth is the only uh, flat planet? Like, no, I don't think anything's a planet. There's no proof of a planet. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what we, you know, there's different types of people out there. And people get so angry with you or me for giving them just this different, like, opinion on something. They can't just say, oh, that's cool, Eric. That's kind of cool and just walk on. No, they have to degrade you. They have to mock you, make fun of you. 
They can't just say, oh, that was interesting. But I'm going to move on now. No, no, I have what do to you think? Now put you down, Eric. <laughs> what, what do you think the reason for that, that is? I mean, with trolls, with trolls online, you know, they just enjoy doing that anyway. But what about like with friends and family? What do you think is the reason that they so often jump to that kind of behavior and that kind of attitude when you breach subjects like this with them? Why aren't they more understanding and polite and, you know, talk it, you know, why don't they want to discuss it a little bit more? Um, what, what do you think is the reason why people on subjects like this, they're so quick to dismiss them and to even insult you. I mean, I've, I even had a time when when I first brought up 9-11 uh, to my dad, he stopped talking to me for a couple months. Like, he just wow. didn't want to hear about it anymore. This is wow. back years and years ago. And, and now, now my dad's a vegan flat earther. He knows 9-11 <laughs> was an inside job. And That's anytime awesome. I bring any anything to him, he he gives it serious consideration that it's totally different. But back then, yeah, he, he reacted just like so many others react. And all I was doing was researching this stuff and trying to tell him about it. And he reacted so violently against it that he, you know, told me to stop talking about it. And I made the executive decision that I didn't want to stop talking about it. I was like, <laughs> you're asking me, what did I do this week? This is what I did this week. What do you want me to answer? You know, I'm talking to my, talking to my parents. You know, you, you try to do your suddenly duty, and and you know, at some point, it would just be a lie. What do we want me to say? Yeah, nothing. I did nothing this week, and yeah. we can't talk. I, about I so. watched the, a Yankee game, or I watched a football <laughs> game. I drank beer yeah. with my friends, and uh, you know, I got in a fight. You know? Yeah, like, no. and it's not even real. I mean, but like. I didn't. I sat in my room the whole week and read books and watched documentaries about 9-11. Like, do you want to talk about it or not? <laughs> <laughs> like we, no, we, can hang up, we can hang up now. Or, and that's what it got. So he's like, yeah, well, forget it. Then. And so um, that went on for a couple months. It was just like a stalemate. And then my mom, I guess, came to him crying and was like, you know, it's your son. just talk to him about it. You don't have to believe him. Just talk to him about it. And he's like, fine. And so, so they called me again. And then, uh, um, and we watched Loose Change together, the, yeah. that documentary. I know that one. And uh, that was the big turning point. I mean, after that, you could just see in his demeanor, he was just like, it's like, well, I'm not. And he always uses this line nowadays. He'll be like, well, I don't believe it, but that was interesting and i'm gonna look into that more which is what everybody should do like that's the perfect right. response is don't instantly believe this new information just because i'm telling you and i'm saying that i researched it and i think this is how it is but i don't want you to believe me i want you to do what i just did for yourself and then tell me do you come to the same conclusion that i do and then we can talk about it um and that's what we do i do that with my parents all the time now and it's great but that's awesome. we had to go we had to go through that process first to get to where we are now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I, when I talked to my parents about it too, about the flat earth, um, he, my father was just like, kind of like, look at me like, what did you just watch or learn? Like, where is this coming from? And uh, uh, he kept saying, you know, gravity or no, the, we're moving, the sun stinks still. And then he skipped one of those. And I would, you know, teach him about the horizon, you know, um, you know, Re getting the ships to reappear after they um, go over the curve of the earth and all this stuff. And, you know, I think he slowly started to come around as well and be like, wow, this is, you know, they, they told me that his um, uncle was a flat earther. And this was going back to uh, 50s, 60s. I couldn't believe it. I yeah. knew his name was Uncle Patsy. And I was like, wow, I wish I knew that back then. <laughs> I was going to have some talks before he passed, but uh, he told me that, and I was really, like, he had no internet, this guy, no nothing, and he knew the earth was flat back then. And he'd mm. make fun of the ball like we are today. <laughs> and uh, that guy, you know, impressed me. He couldn't really speak too good of English, but, hey, you know, that, that was pretty cool. But, yeah, I think my parents have come around as well to mm. uh, the shape of the earth. You know, they don't, they don't, you know, they hear what I'm saying. They say, yeah, it's interesting what you're saying. And that's all I ask for, I guess, you know, hear me out, hear you out. That's all we're asking for. We're not yep. forcing you to, you know, 
even research it really, but just, you know, you ask, like you said, you ask what you did, this is what I did. So hear me out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's all. And that's what everybody should be doing out there. You don't have to agree with something, but you know, if you're talking to somebody, it's respectful to at least hear what they have to say, then give your opinion. That's how a conversation works. But these people online are, are out there. They're just, I don't know, very negative people and unprofessional. I wouldn't, if I was a Glover, I wouldn't want these people to, um, you know, speak for me. Mm -hmm. uh, swearing and name calling and bullying. That could stay on YouTube, Eric. That's cool. People talking about killing you on YouTube songs. That could stay up. Eric right. Bay says, we're not moving. Eric is flat. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense. You're a bully, Eric. <laughs> what a bully uh, you put a lot of time into your stuff though like you are a busy truther uh because i watch you know everything you, you put out and it's like this this he takes a lot of time to do these things to to help you know stand up for himself basically what you do and i'm glad you do that and i think there's other people who, who should do it too um i'm always on their comments just to let you know always standing up for you you know um there's like hundreds of them, you know, but they all say the same nonsense anyway. And then you just come right back like, no, here you go. Here's the proof. Here's proof. Here's proof. Here's proof. You know, but they're, they're all messed up. Hmm. Yeah. But I appreciate all your work, man. Like really like for the movement, uh, I'm sure a lot of us do, you know, you're, you're the, you're like the guy to go to for this subject. Yeah. Thanks, man. That's my opinion. And uh, I think a lot of others as well, you know. It's like, like I said before, everybody has said your name either one one time or another. So that that's huge. Uh, how about that dinosaur guy, Trevor, um, wanted to physically kill you or fight you with a baseball bat, all because you're saying, you're like, dinosaurs don't exist, which is another great topic because <clears throat> I didn't know museums did not have real dinosaur bones until I heard your stuff. And I called the museum and to see if this is true, because that's what we should do. You know, you, we can hear what you have to say and we have to go prove what you said is right. And sure enough, yeah, we don't have real 100% uh, dinosaur skeletons in anywhere here in our museums. Like why? Uh, but we do have this one little bone attached to this big T-Rex, but that little bone is real. I'm like, what? Well, where's the real bones? um we don't know we don't know like why we can't see the real bones why they're too they're too fragile <laughs> you, might, you might you might crumble them with your eyesight well can't they put them behind glass like big thick glass or something for us maybe or there's got to be a way <laughs> and and how come dinosaurs the bones just came out like recently like past couple hundred years, right? Like, mm -hmm. don't you think the Aztecs, the Mayans, everybody would be discovering these things and painting them on their walls, like big dinosaurs, like killing people, chopping their heads off. Like, mm -hmm. that's the time where they would be here, um, like above ground even, you know, dinosaurs should be everywhere, the bones. But no, we just found them recently and that's when we started finding them and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever you say, I never seen one, but. I'll believe you because you got a white lab coat on. So yeah, right. why would he lie to me? You know? And what, what happens if you try to say that uh, dinosaurs don't exist? Experts in the field will go on the Joe Rogan podcast, <laughs> mute, mute your entire audio, watch it, make fun of you the entire time for their audience, and then threaten to physically uh, harm you with a baseball bat after swearing up and down about you know, all these other things he was going to do to me. It's not a debunking video if they're not swearing and name calling <laughs> where It's not a debunking video without that. Anybody. I found it interesting that they turned my audio off for the entire thing, too. My, yeah. Any other show that Joe's done where he brings a guest on to critique something, they play the thing that he's critiquing, at least. Right. With me, though, they're like, nope, they just turned the audio right off. And yeah. then they just sat there in silence watching my video on screen until he had something to interject. It's yeah. quite telling. But, and, and then shortly after that was when they canceled the Neil Tyson debate. And ever since then, 
I, Joe has never said my name or brought anything up. It's like they they realized that even all this negative publicity and them using my name because I put it in rap songs and I'd, I'd take any any media that they made about me, I blew it up. And all it was doing was making them look stupid. So I'm sure that people like Neil Tyson and Joe Rogan were told from their higher ups that don't even mention this guy's name anymore because they were doing <laughs> I mean, do you remember? They did whole shows on me. They did a show yes, with the Metabunk, yeah. Metabunk guy. Rogan they did a show. Me, I can't remember how many times he, he yeah. talked about you. Did he ever so ask were, you to come on his show? Like, ever? Like, hey, Eric, you want to come on? Like, Skype, like we're doing? Has he ever offered that to you? Never. Never. But he'll talk about you for hours. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's cool. But I'm going to talk about this guy for about five podcasts, maybe more, but I'm never going to ask him to come on my show. Who does that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll cut his audio out and have his detractors on to swear at him and threaten him with violence, but I'm not going to let him talk for himself. And like, isn't that very counter to what most people think of Joe Rogan? They, they think Joe Rogan is like this, he'll questions talk to anybody. Yeah, <laughs> Joe Rogan questions everything. Yeah, yeah except well. for Kirby bending oceans, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and the moon landing since 2016 or whatever. He used to be this adamant moon landing hoax, you know, researcher, and he would go on uh, radio shows and demolish anyone that tried to debate him, saying that the moon landings were real. And then suddenly he became best friends with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he decided, I'm too stupid to know what happened on the moon. I accept the fact that I couldn't possibly know. And back then I was duped by some conspiracy theorist friends I had. He just follows this narrative now. retarded. Yeah, yeah, he calls himself retarded. Yeah, it's I'm like, a no, you are. Yeah, like, if you, you listen to him I when he used to talk about them. these subjects, he was not retarded when he talked yeah. about them. He know he he remembered, no, you know, they were awesome. facts and figures, and he was able to machine gun them out to people faster than they could rebut them. So, I mean, that's not a retarded guy that hasn't done his research. He knew what he was talking about, and somebody told him to shut shut up about it. It's, it's clear because he made a 180 degree switch on that subject just like he did on the Eric Dubay subject. Like I said, he was going full force on anti-Eric Dubay until suddenly he just decided, nope, we're not gonna even, we're gonna pretend he doesn't exist. Ignore him, and it's been like that ever since. That's not a red flag. Right? <laughs> that, that's not, that's normal, uh, you know? How about his audience? It's like, well, who's this Eric Dubay guy Joe keeps talking about? Let me let me look him up if he, if they can find you and your stuff because of mm -hmm. all the algorithms all crazy with your they 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 ban everything of you really, um, but yeah his audience got to be like what who what's this about let me look into it so he did you a favor I think by um, saying your name and having this big fat piss stained beard dude like threaten you with violence like you said like that's cool that can get millions of views YouTube's cool with that right. Um, some somebody wanted me to ask you because uh, I told him I was gonna be talking to you soon, and he wanted to uh, know why, Eric. Why are they lying about the shape of the Earth? That's the other I big explain, one. Yeah, I'm trying to explain to them. Well, I'm not the psychopath that started this or, or continues to do this. I'm not the one that's not allowing you to go explore Antarctica. Okay, I'm I'm not that guy. So. I mean, what do you? I mean, I, I saw your. Uh, I, I told him how the detective, um, where the apprentice detectives, like saying to the his boss, like, why did these people get murdered here? Well, I, I mean, yeah, there's blood, the dead bodies right there. You know, there's weapons and knives of blood on it, but, but why? I don't. You know, it's like I don't. And, and not only here for. not only are they stuck on the why, but they won't even <laughs> believe or look at the physical evidence until you give them a reason why that makes them, you know, a little bit more inquisitive. Because all the bloody knives and all that, like, they don't even see it, they're not even looking there. They're just like, detective, why would he do this though? But why though? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's, and what is that? That's a defense mechanism. That's all that is, because you're asking the wrong person a question that they cannot possibly answer. And that's your right. prerequisite to look into this subject further? Okay, well then you're coping. You know, that's just a defense mechanism here. You you don't actually care. If you actually cared, you'd look into it as extensively as we have and come to the same conclusions we have and be just as reticent 
to answer the question of why when someone asks it, because who are you to answer the question? It would be like going to a police, uh, you know, a policeman and being like, why did Ted Bundy do what he did? What was going on inside his head? What were his inner motives during all of that? And the police officer is just there with a donut and he's like, he's not even, he hasn't even read the case. He's just like, Ted Bundy? He's like, I heard about him on TV. <laughs> oh, would you ask me why? Why did he do it? What yeah, yeah. answer is he going to give? <laughs> it's he's like, not Ted Bundy. You know? and he's even a if he psychopath. Was, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And even if he was the That's what foremost, do. even if he was the foremost Ted Bundy researcher, like people think I am on the flat earth, I still can't tell you why Ted Bundy did that. I don't, right. I have, I wouldn't lie to you about the flat, I'm, tell, I'm the one telling you the truth about the flat earth. Right. Why are you asking me about the motives of liars that I, I know nothing about? Like I'm the complete opposite of the person you should be asking that question to if you cared, but you don't care. And that's why you're asking the question. You're actually asking the question because deep down, you don't want me to talk about this subject. You don't want to talk about it. You wish I'd shut up about it. And that question is your little way to get me to shut up about it. Because whatever I say afterward, you're just going to hum and haw and eh, no, and you're done. Because I didn't come up with a satisfactory answer for that impossible question. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great answer, man. You know, I don't know why he expects me or you to have this answer, but. You know, we're over here showing him, hey, here's all the evidence. This is for you. Go prove if it's uh, correct or incorrect and come back. He'll do that. He comes out. I saw all the evidence. I read all the, uh, the books, the video, everything. But since I don't know why they would do this, I'm not going to believe it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that makes no sense. But okay, onward. But like you said, that's their way of never wanting me to stop talking about it, maybe. So, but that's not going to work, you know. I'm and it may be subconscious. That. I'm not even saying your friend consciously knows that that question is a defense mechanism. That that whole process could be subconscious as well. And he doesn't even realize that that question isn't really sincere or genuine. And it's really more of a deflection mechanism to not have to talk about the nitty gritty of this subject that he thinks he knows about, but actually he, he only knows one side of the story and the, the education system has completely cut us off from the other side of the story that if they were actually given equal credit and equal time for us to research them, I guarantee you no one would be a globe earther. The only reason globe earthers exist is because of the incredible amount of censorship they've done over the centuries on this flat earth subject. It's It was really difficult for me to find the original books that I found that made me a flat earther. That's why there weren't many flat earthers back in the day, because where would you find this information? The only information out there was the Flat Earth Society website that has a bunch of nonsense. So you're not going to be able to become a flat earther if there's not legitimate flat earth information at your fingertips. And the controllers of society are well aware of this and have been long at work making sure to push the globe propaganda at all angles and censor this real information anywhere they can. Right. Um, I had another question for you was uh, this whole Flat Earth Society, how they believe the uh, disk Earth is rising upwards, I think 9.8 meters per second accelerating, and that's what accounts for Earth's gravity, right? right. Now, why are there people we know that we respect and look up to saying saying these kinds of things right we're all agreement on this you know 90 percent of okay all of a sudden there's this one part that it's totally opposite of one another and i don't know how i could be okay with system saying this because there is no proof of the accelerating earth in my right. you know i i haven't seen any good proofs of it have you i mean or even rising. So some of them make the distinction that it doesn't need to be accelerating. It could just be rising. Well, OK, either way, there's no there's no evidence of either of those. So, yeah, like you said, there's a few people in the community that have long been respected by myself and others who are now 
um, seriously considering, not, not saying definitely, but very close to a, a definite, um, you know, spiel that they give about it, saying that, you know, it's what they say is like, it's the only way that they see that it could work. And to me, I'm like, what? The only way that you can <laughs> see <laughs> the gravity, you know, or density yeah. and buoyancy, the, the effects of so-called gravity working on our flat Earth, the only way you can see that working is through a constantly rising Earth, through an infinite space model. Because for there to be a constantly rising Earth, there must be infinite space also for it to rise into. And that was one of the main things that, you know, flat Earthers are, like, there's no evidence that there's infinite space, so you, you don't want to just claim that thing so basically they're making assumptions they're making we, we can prove in many ways that we said earlier that the earth is motionless it's stationary we're not moving and we can't prove that space is infinite and you can infinitely rise so to try and explain the effects of so-called gravity you are making two more assumptions that you don't know that the earth is constantly rising and that there's infinite space to constantly rise into and the only reason they're making those assumptions is because they say that all motion needs a force to be put in motion, like Newton said or something. So they, they <clears throat> think that there must be some kind of force making, um, th you know, like a helium balloon go up and a rock go down. What is making it happen? And just saying density and, and buoyancy isn't enough, they'll say. <clears throat> but every phenomena that exists whether it is a helium balloon going up through the air or a rock falling down through the air whether it's an air bubble rising up through the water or water droplet falling down through the air these motions are all happening of their own accord because the objects because of the relationship between the object and the surrounding medium and that explains everything you do not need to assume some kind of acceleration or a rising earth or some kind of motion or an infinite space to explain why helium balloons go up and rocks go down or, or any other thing. Everything settles according to uh, the ratio of the object's density versus the medium's density. That's it. You don't need any further explanation. You don't need some kind of force to force them to do these motions. And if you do introduce a force, now you're introducing new strange phenomena that have to be accounted for. So if the helium, you know, so no, so if rocks are falling down because the Earth disk is rising up, then why are helium balloons still rising up with the Earth disk that rises up? So now you just made it even more complicated. <laughs> it makes no sense to, to explain your first thing. Now you right. gotta have oh yeah well the helium balloon is rising it's like the globe argument well yeah it's rising w along with the earth at the same rate that the earth is rising and so that's why it seems like the helium balloon is going up and it seems like the rock's going down so like at this that. point you're convoluting something that's really simple right. by by claiming that oh i need a force i need to have a force otherwise i can't believe it and for that bit i just have this little quote um i was going to read out some uh, a guy named Chris Pierman, he wrote this, he said, if you had a very huge magnet and it pulled a nail across a table, then that nail hit a marble as it was moving, the nail itself would be providing a force, much like objects moving to seek their proper density level with respect to height are now providing a force. If a rising helium balloon hit a mosquito, the rising balloon is the provider of force that causes the mosquito's trajectory, the, that causes the mosquito's trajectory change in and of itself with respect to the two items. If it helps your thoughts, you can give it a name. It's just another phenomenon like magnetism is a phenomenon. In the magnet example, magnetism causes motion. In the density example, being too dense or not dense enough compared to the surrounding medium is the phenomenon providing the force. Since everyone can agree that objects do seek their relative density level, perhaps it's a good idea to call it densitism. Just saying in general, call it or don't call it whatever you want. If you really wanted to get into it, a very sensitive weight scale could be attached to a ceiling, the face of it down, fill a balloon with X amount of helium. This will become one unit and let it go against the scale. Whatever the scale reads is the measurement of densitism force provided by one unit of helium. Then all other objects can be compared to this standard, thus making all of it 
a standard itself. We are going to need XX units of densitism force to sink the submarine to a depth of Y, Captain, and so on. I suppose the balloon's material and properties should be recorded as part of the standard or find an even better way to make a standard of it all. That's an excellent quote by just a, a commenter in my YouTube section, you know, guy I've talked to on Facebook. Excellent, um, you know, concept, thought experiment. And it just shows that people claiming that we need some named force before we can claim that density and buoyancy is satisfactory enough for to to account for the so-called effects of gravity okay densitism you know like we just said it, just because yeah. just because we haven't created a term and and made a standard for it doesn't mean that this force is non-existent we just haven't standardized it yet and if we did it would be more valid than gravity that people think is the you know gold standard for things now so yeah, yeah, I just wanted to read that to, to show that everything is already explained perfectly through the natural physics of density and buoyancy, and no other assumptions need to be made like a rising disk earth or infinite space to account for why objects move. Right, I 100% agree. Um, isn't that kind of like asking why is fire hot and why is ice cold? Like, why does things fall down, not up, Eric? Like, well, that's just what it does. We just, you know, we just gave you this answer. Like, the the uh, sun is never going to be cold. An ice cube is never going to be hot. When I drop this bone ball, it's never going to go up. But why? Here we go with the why again. Like, why does the sun have to be hot? Uh, why are these things falling down? Like, it's real simple. Then somebody did an experiment where they, were, they took out all the air out of this chamber, and they dropped the feather in the bowling ball. And now that all the air is gone, it fell at the same exact time because there was no air pressure for the feather to push off of. And that's why the feather will go s slower. And when they're just like, wow, that's incredible. I'm like, I, I guess you took the air out of something and it felt, you know, I don't know. They just thought it wasn't that impressive to me. You know? They just changed the medium. So they, they moved, they turned the medium to zero. So now your medium is zero, so everything falls at the same rate. That's all you've done. You haven't done any any right. weird thing, and it still works in the equations for density and buoyancy, which uh, you can see on my website. Uh, I've got a, a paper by an electrical engineer that did all the um, all the equations for gravity, but using only density and buoyancy and taking out gravity because it's just a placeholder term that doesn't even need to be in the equations. Everything mathematically already works out without gravity and like you're saying this this constant why that they ask uh it gets to a point where you're like a two-year-old that just why but why but why <laughs> and anyone that's had a two-year-old knows that there is no end to that type of questioning and so this why? is again back to this defense mechanism of why but why would they do it oh but why does gravity work that way anytime these people whine with the why it, <laughs> it means that they can just continue asking questions and never accepting your answer just like a two-year-old who yeah but, but why do you have to go to work daddy because i have to make money but why do you have to make money daddy because I have to look after you. But why do you have to look after me, Daddy? Oh, because I don't want you to die. But why do you want me to die, Daddy? <laughs> because I love you. But why do you love me, Daddy? I'm starting not to love you with these questions. <laughs> no, I, I, oh, so people God. were asking me this on the forum, and I said the same thing you said. I said, I would say that is tantamount to asking why is water wet? Why is ice cold? And why is fire hot? You can assume a constantly rising <laughs> earth you can assume those a constantly are, rising, those are ridiculous rising questions. <laughs> of course. You can assume a constantly asked. rising earth through assumed oh. infinite space to assume an answer to such question, or you can just leave assumption out of it and let it be what it is. Um and then I sorry, just scrolling up. No, that's uh, funny, man. Yeah, and then I said um asking questions and never being fully satisfied with the answers is good. But when any, but anyone who has spent significant time with a four-year-old knows that after every single answer given, you can continue to ask why. At no time is there an answer which can put an end to the perpetual question of why. And eventually the kid won't shut up 
until you give an answer like, because that's just the way it is. And that is not a cop out. At some point, continually asking why will lead you to an infinite regress of explanations based on other explanations that never lead to any satisfactory conclusion. Because at the ultimate level, the ultimate answer to all these questions is, it is that way because that is how it was created to be. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not the creator. We're not in, in the intelligent designer, okay? We can't understand everything. There's just no possible physical way. You're a human. You're just a human. We're not something, you can't create a human. So how could you create the sun? You know, how could you do this? You can't. So uh, like, I don't know why, why they're like that. I mean, like you said, a four-year-old asking why all the time. It's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. It really is. He's like 30-year-old grown man I'm talking to over here. Why? 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 I'm like, I'm glad to be on this side. I don't want to be on the fantasy world over here. Uh, it's a religion, you know. Uh, the whole NASA and the globe spinning testicle, blade spheroid, pear shaped spherical round shaped planet they live on. I don't want to be a part of that. I want reality. I want my facts. I, this is this is it. Okay. If you don't want to be a part of that, then I guess we have to have a line between us, which is unfortunate. Because you don't bring any evidence to us. They don't. They don't even know what to say when we talk. All they could do is, like you said, try to debunk it. And then right away, we're just like, well, that was easy. Like, here you go. Here's this answer. Here's well, what about eclipses, Eric? Oh, they can't get past the eclipse. No, that's the one we have. And then, boom, you said, like, well, they have to be Back to up. the lights in the sky again, right? Yeah, yeah. We still got to be always looking up there. <laughs> see, look, see that light? And you see the shadow <laughs> over that light? That means... The Earth is a ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I like the uh, whole Rahu, um, so third celestial body um, idea. I think that's really cool, man. Because that's when what I it see is. See those it's... eclipses uh, in videos, YouTube videos. That's exactly what it looks like. It looks yeah. like something just went there, and I was like, "Boop!" I'm like, "Wow, yeah. what was that?" Right. What the hell was that? Yeah, it's definitely um, not the moon. They claim them uh, during the <laughs> solar eclipses. But it's something that's yeah. shaped just like them, the same size. And all these, these ancient um, like stories they have about Rahu, it's, it's, he's like this jealous uh, god or whatever that's behind the scenes and he wants to rule. And, and he gets his day in the sun, so to speak, during the eclipse. And he's the ruler uh, during that time. And... So he, he's a separate, like here in Thailand, they have, it's called Prat Rahu. He's a, Prat is the word for monk or god. And Rahu, they use the exact same name as the Hindu Indian version. And you'll see him, uh, there's a statue right near where I am. He's all black and he wears gold regalia. And he is always positioned with his mouth open and a gold sphere in his mouth. Oh yeah, I've seen that on one of your videos. Yeah, a picture mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. yeah, and so he's he's who they've said for you know centuries causes eclipses, and the ancient wisdom is that it's a separate uh, disc, uh, I call it a translucent dark disc. So whereas the uh, moon is like a translucent light disc, this would be like the opposite. And it eclipses both the sun and the moon. It's the same size as both of them. And if you look during an eclipse, it often, like, if it was the way they said it was, the, the thing doesn't come from the right angle, and it doesn't go away from the right angle. <clears throat> and when it's eclipsed, it stays for a little bit longer than it should. <clears throat> right. It, I noticed that. Like, like if, the, if the Earth is moving to cause the eclipse, like they say, that like a small Earth is moving, and then suddenly these, these two other things just poof, perfect. Well, then the, this process should go exactly the same speed. But what actually happens in eclipses is this. It goes like this, and it like locks for a second, and then it goes. That is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That totally debunks what they're saying. Absolutely. Right. Why, and why people can see that for themselves. Yeah. It's not, it's not a little bit? Okay, there it goes. Yeah. Like, really? Oh, interesting. 
they always don't want us to stare at that too, right? Like the news yeah. people, are like, oh, we don't want you to get blind. Don't don't look at the eclipse. I'm like, really? Yeah, maybe you'd, you'd think what I just that. said. If you looked at it long enough, you'd realize as the shadow moves, and then when it becomes fully eclipsed, it stays there way longer than it should, based on their model. It, it the the full eclipse shouldn't be any longer than every other moment of the eclipse, right? But based on their model, it's slowly moving. The full eclipse should be a second long, and then it should continue going right from never there. Stop. Why would never it stop. stop. Why would it stop? It right. does not stop on their model. No, that I don't think I do that. Um, but I mean, I, I've seen it, the videos. I just never thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really cool, and uh, I like that. Like I think to the creator almost uh did, did certain things on purpose like polaris i think polaris is for us mm. they made this designer made that one star that's that's such a the, the coolest star ever because it's unique it doesn't move so and it's directly um, over the center point of the earth another, so it's and it's like uh it's like the our guiding light if we if to get to the the most significant point on the flat earth is the north pole the middle point that's the other thing the ball does you turn into a ball suddenly the north pole which is directly under polaris the only non-moving star which is the center of the flat earth suddenly that's just a random place on a ball suddenly that doesn't matter anymore and back in the day as, as you know the north pole used to have maps showing uh Land. islands lands there and the, the the map said that there were people living there and all this and there was a big magnetic uh uh mountain there and there was yeah. a whirlpool yeah so these things were hundreds of years ago this was common knowledge and now suddenly today oh no it's just there's like ice and water there and there's nothing there there's no reason for you to go to the north pole and the earth is a ball so the north pole isn't significant in any way whatsoever and polaris moves you know it was through band five thousand years ago so that's not significant either nothing significant go back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> this do I think if you look at the North Pole today, is it like absolutely nothing there? Not even ice. Is it just <laughs> they, water they, today? They say it switches, so they'll they'll show you uh, some icy water during the summer, and they'll show you some snowy ice during the winter somewhere, some tundra, and that's wow. The North Pole. Wow. <laughs> there's no proof. Okay. There's no proof that it's the North Pole because if you were at the North Pole, what you could do is you could point a camera straight up and see Polaris never moving 90 degrees to your position and all the other stars moving perfect circles around your position. It's the only place on Earth you'd be able to see that incredible vantage point and you can't wow. see a single video on YouTube that shows that. Wow. Why? Why? If, <laughs> if we can supposedly take trips to the North Pole for little photo ops and, and you know rich people can have penguin tours to Antarctica and all this stuff, why don't we have legitimate uh, photos of the star trails I just said, or legitimate um, uh, videos of the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Why do we just get these little skips and these little flip frames and the clouds don't match up and all this crap? I would say because they aren't at those real places and they can't get those videos, so this is the best we can get. <laughs> yeah, Antarctica is, uh, is another huge one. Um, how everybody's cool with like no independent exploration that's cool we don't need to go there like yeah we do and why wouldn't we want to go there like let's go see what's over at antarctica uh you're gonna you know it's too cold we're not gonna fly planes over it we're gonna make it where 46 nations all agree that you're not allowed to step foot on here independently but we're gonna fight over things like money and oil you know that stuff we're gonna argue and fight and kill each other over but antarctica now no feats of yours here uh okay but i mean that's huge to me antarctica is very fascinating to me because that's obviously it's like we don't know like i want to just go anywhere you go right now if you walk in a straight line you're going to hit antarctica correct mm -hmm. on a globe it doesn't work like that because if you're at the equator you can go straight and just go around like this and never touch antarctica that would right. be a cool experiment Exactly. If we were able to do these types of things, mm -hmm. uh, I'm surprised. I think everybody who has the money to fund something like this is probably part of the elite anyway. Mm -hmm. Like people like me and you or whoever. I, don't, I mean, I don't know any millionaire, billionaire friends. 
Unfortunately, mm -hmm. hey, let's uh, can we just like take a, a plane, go to Antarctica, we'll fly as far as we can, and when we run out of gas, we'll get on our you know, uh, snowmobiles or whatever, and just go that way, have a uh, camp and shelter. And that's true exploration, mm -hmm. that's hardcore ris risking your life for science, and we can't do that, even if somebody had the balls and money to do that, we physically cannot do that. And yeah, the military will that. prevent the military will prevent us from doing that because they have prevented people from doing that that have tried. So there's a precedent, and no, they don't allow it. Um, exactly. Yeah, that doesn't sound very uh, free uh, right? to me. I mean, <clears throat> what kind of free world is that? Like you can't step foot here ever, ever. Like and that's that the other. <laughs> of course, that's the other <laughs> uh, significant portion on a flat earth that the globe removes. So the Polaris and the North Pole being the center of the flat earth being the most significant point that's removed once it's a globe. Antarctica is the other one. Like you said, Antarctica on the flat earth is the perimeter that surrounds everything and it's south in every direction. If you go straight, you end up in Antarctica. Therefore, Antarctica is the second most significant, um, you know, location on a flat earth that becomes insignificant on a globe. On a flat earth, it's the perimeter. If you are in a cage, it's anything that has limits, it is the natural thing for inquisitive humans to check that out, to go there. Just like the center point that everything revolves around. Those two things are gonna naturally bring human inquisitiveness to them to the point that we would find out the truth. And there's a good answer for the why. Why does the, uh, the, the Earth have to be a globe? Well, maybe there's something in Antarctica or beyond Antarctica, or there's something at the North Pole that the people who are making this deception are hiding from you. <clears throat> and the best way to hide Antarctica and the North Pole from public awareness is to change the shape of the thing we are actually on into a shape in which no place on that shape is significant anymore. They're all equal. Maybe that's why the Earth had to be a globe. But I don't know because I'm not right. the one that did it and I've never been to Antarctica or the North Pole. So don't ask me. Research it yourself <laughs> like all of us are and you're going to come to these same conclusions. <clears throat> yeah. No, that's that's a great answer for them. Like, oh, like they make these cringy comments. Oh, why don't you go fall off the edge, your flat Earth? They're like, if I could, I, I I would if there was one, but I don't, I can't. I physically they won't can't let go me. Fall. They won't let me anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere near it. Yeah. So I mean, they have no idea what they're talking about. They're they're uneducated because, the, like I said, you don't have to be a, a flat earther, but you should study up on it. See what this big thing a lot of people are talking about. You might as well study up on it so you can debate somebody like me or you or, or anyone into this. Um, but that won't happen. <laughs> and in Antarctica, in my opinion, if we were ever to independently explore that, like that would be really crazy. Because all I could picture is just once that sun is like left behind, as we're going away from the sun and the moon, if, if there is no other sun and moon there, it's going to be total darkness. It's going to be freezing cold. But you know what? Uh, there are people out there willing to risk their life, like Admiral Byrd or, or any other explorers that were allowed to do that no no longer but if i was the government and i knew the earth was a ball and you wanted to go risk your life to antarctica be my guess i might even find you to go explore it for me mm -hmm. like but no no you can't go there so and they'll be allowed there so exploration's off off limits that's it just like that so but that, that's what i could picture antarctica being like just dark and cold and Hopefully there could be another sun and moon somewhere else, another earth earth pot kind of thing. Who knows? The, mm -hmm. That's up for debate. Uh, it's, it's all speculation until we could physically do it. But, you know, the ideas are cool to think of. Yeah. People believe in domes, um, you know, infinite planes, whatever, other pods, like other islands, uh, other continents, um, you know, anything goes. Mm -hmm. And for us not to know that answer, everybody wants to know what happens when you die, Eric. Eric, where do I go when I die? Let's concentrate here where we are first. Let's, let's go explore where we are. 
<laughs> then maybe we can have a better answer of what we do when we die. But if we can't explore everything where we are, how are we going to have that answer? We don't have the answer where we are living right now. You know, it's, it's crazy and everybody's cool with it. And well, everybody's I mean, yeah. been given answers for everything. There's an atheistic answer for everything. And that's why people are so against the intelligent design or any religious argument is when you accept the spiritual side of reality, you're accepting that you can't explain everything. But these ego, you know, huge ego atheist types that think a big bang and every, like there's a physical explanation that their science teacher told them for every single thing in human existence. Right. So it's really an ego trip. You know, the atheistic <clears throat> ego trip is to believe that you can explain everything in the universe. Whereas right. the spiritual humility is understanding that there's something bigger than you, beyond you, you know, your ego isn't the biggest thing here. <laughs> and that thing knows more than us and, and, and we can never fully explain it. And so we're just kind of floundering here agnostically trying to figure out what reality is. That's the real position. That's our, that's where we really stand. These people th thinking that everything has a physical materialistic explanation and there are no mysteries left in the world because they know it all because science figured it out. Yeah, there's right. no there's no one more deluded than these people. Yet they think <laughs> that, yet they think that they are the most rational and logical. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, to to not be able to explore that again is is stopping us from like like when I'm I'm at a standstill basically. It seems like since we can't do that. We can't go further, basically, in our in our heads and our journey in life. Really, it's like there's a line and we can't cross it. So now, what do I do? How do I keep knowing what? Like people like infinite space. Space is infinite. You can keep going and going and going. It's like, but again, like we can't go past this line. I want to know what's out here. I don't even care about that yet until I can find out where I am on the ground beneath my feet. That that's what matters to me right now, and yeah. I wish everybody cared about that because that's huge to know what's beyond antarctica and, and people like joe rogan oh where's these pictures and evidence of these ice walls and I'm like dude everywhere what do you mean like <laughs> they got videos uh pick real pictures you know what else do you need those things exist joe you can go there on a tourist group and that's about it right and they'll say oh here we are in the south pole you'll never know that if I tell you that, you'll believe me because you're a typical gullible sheep who believes everything somebody with a uniform or on TV says. Simple. I say this, so you believe it. It's that simple. So, but yeah, that's that's where I am right now in my head as far as um, what, where are we? It's this line I can't cross. Mm -hmm. And that bugs me mm -hmm. a lot, like every day. It's like, oh, I'll never know that, that answer. But the closest answer we got was Admiral Berg, where he said there's a land there bigger than middle America, I, I believe mm -hmm. he said. Um, yeah, it's like a land that's never been touched by human feet, larger than America, beyond the South Pole, something like that. Okay, yeah, so I mean, uh, well, let's keep going. What's beyond <laughs> that? Right. You know, well, Nothing, you just keep there. coming back because it's a ball. There is, <laughs> yeah, you know, ball. Again. Why Why lie? Well, here you go. On a ball, the South Pole is the farthest point you can get and before you start coming back. But in reality, when you go to the South Pole, they admit that it's just a ceremonial pole. And it's not the real South Pole because the real one constantly moves because it's a molten... Oh man, there's so many, so many convoluted shit you gotta believe to be able to believe this <laughs> shit. I keep regressing my explanation back. So the explanation for that is, that they say that the ball has the molten metal that causes the right. poles to move, but molten metal isn't magnetic, so that doesn't work. And then the poles constantly moving makes no sense if you've got a ceremonial pole that everybody visits for no reason. And then if you go to the ceremonial pole and you have a compass, it should be able to point north in all directions as you walk around it. But it doesn't do that. And even that wouldn't make sense on a ball because 
north on a ball is through the is down. If you're on the <laughs> if you're standing <laughs> but upside there is no down, down on a ball, <laughs> you're standing upside down at the south pole. You have to look yeah. down at the ground through it, <laughs> then to for your compass to point to the north. <laughs> but you also have to you have that. to hold hold your compass <laughs> flat. Yeah, and so the compass, if if even if it was showing north out to all points, that would mean it's pointing out into outer space, <laughs> because north yeah. is not straight outwards like that on a ball. So how is this? You know, that, that's another easy proof. If people had a compass at the South Pole, you could just do. do. They're lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah, they're saying the South Pole moves. Right. I guess it's never. And, and the North Pole. They say both of them. Oh, and the North Pole now too, huh? Really? Yeah. But again, you or I can't go and prove this <laughs> with our own. Right. We have to take their word for mm -hmm. it. Like, okay, well, that's that's science. If that's science, I've never <laughs> heard of it before. Yeah. Take our word. You can't do it yourself. No experimentation for you, buddy. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's settled science. <laughs> yeah, settled science. Or as uh, right. someone said, no, no science is settled because that's how you do science. You know, the, yeah. the idea that this term that they use, it's like, it's been settled, it's settled science. It's like, you don't understand the word science, <laughs> do you? <laughs> that's not how science yeah. works. If you think, you know, it's you're done and there can never be any more experimentation or any other possible theories or hypotheses based on some phenomena, that's called dogma. That's not science. That is doctrine. That's not science anymore. That is religion. Okay, so to keep it in the realm of science, you need to stay open-minded. And that's where all of these atheistic materialists have lost the plot, where they think that they're still doing science, but they haven't been doing science for you know, a couple centuries now. They've just been believing experts. Um, couldn't um, Flat Earth, all of us, go away overnight if somebody legit got in an airplane? and circumnavigated the Earth from north to south or from south to north, wouldn't it just take be that easy to make all, right. all of us go away? All right, just live stream it. Show us yeah. that you can go or it would or in a straight line. That's the other one they said. Well, this would be a straight line too. Either way, wouldn't even have to be the North Pole. Any, any way in a straight line until you come back to your starting point, which is what they say there happens on a globe. Do it. There you go. Live stream yeah. it. Show us that that's possible, <laughs> that you can go in one direction and then come right back around yourself. Hey, I'm back. Can you... <laughs> and don't just allow one person to do it. Allow anyone who wishes to do this to, to do it. Right. You know, because then it'll go back to, well, take our work because we live streamed it. We didn't manipulate that video in any way. Uh, you know, so, but yeah, it could be that easy. And for anyone watching that doesn't know that, so all circumnavigations throughout history, whether they're by air or by sea, they don't go in a single straight line and then come back around like they tell you happens and is, is settled science. All of them go in a straight line from port to port. None of them, none of them have gone a, a single circumnavigation. And if they did, it would be a circle because that's what they're all making. If you, you map any from Magellan onward, they're just making a circle and and go, you know, stopping along the way until they get back to their starting point. None of them are going in some kind of straight line that loops back around on itself like they claim the globe does. Nobody makes that. So do it, <laughs> you know? Those of you that think that this is reality, do it once, live stream it, and yeah, every flat earther will shut up. Yep. It's that easy, but they don't do it. They won't do it. They, they want to talk about, oh, but the eclipses, and they look up there, and it makes it. Yeah, it's, it's it's sad. It really is. Um, yeah, you know what would, I, happen, I saw a video you know what would happen if they did do that? What's that? They'd, they'd oh, go they'd go to Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. they'd, they'd answer our questions there. there. They'd find <laughs> out whatever the answer we all want to know. So they definitely aren't going to do that for us. Hey, live stream you going straight in an airplane, any any direction, just go straight and live, let us see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is yeah. their worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> they get like nailed by your shit. Like, <laughs> uh, go, go turn it around. Shut it off. Shut it off. Shut the live stream off. 
Like we're not doing. We ran out of gas, Eric. We didn't bring enough gas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a really cool video um, where there was a magnet in the center of an azimuthal awesome equidistant projection, and they had a compass. And they tell if I want to go east, this is what happens. And it slowly went around the plane because the compass, as we all know, points north. So that is how you circumnavigate around. So if I want to go west, it's not going to be a straight line. It's literally going to turn me. Is that uh, basically how reality is too, right? With the compass and everything. I mean, that's like demonstrable, observable, repeatable, verifiable evidence right there. Right. So now I'll get a ball and try to do that on a ball. The compass is only going to work when it held flat. So you're going to have a problem. You got to put the compass upside down on its side. It's not going to know what to do because that's not reality. And then they can just say, oh, well, it's because it's just not big enough. Here we go with the whole really, really big thing again. No actual equations or math, just really big. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to do with these people. But I, I like that experiment a lot. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, dude, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. I think Polaris has something to do with maybe the magnetism in a compass, maybe. Maybe Polaris is just beaming some kind of a I don't know, electric magnetism. I don't I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it makes sense. Because why does it point north? There you go with the, the they, they go with the hot and cold. Why is hot? Why does the compass point north? Like again, let us go there so we can yep. get a better answer for you. Right. So instead of just hearsay from experts or speculation right. from non-experts. Yeah, I don't know if these, these people understand like how much we physically can't do. I don't mm -hmm. think they understand how, how deep this goes. Because unless you do the research. You're not going to really know. You're only going right. to know your side. Fantasy world, religion over here. So, yeah. Uh, and then I know the open minded people are, are the best kind of people because, you know, they can get something, plant a seed, and slowly, oh, that's one, all it takes one interesting thing to say to somebody about it. And then they're going to be like, okay, let me check this out. And, you, you know, like you said, the flat earth hand with information gets so heavy. And then mm -hmm. this globe spinning pear shaped thing. And just go poof. You know, going back to the, the east that? and west thing. Going back to the east and west thing, I was thinking about how you know, with so with the flat Earth, east and west are circles, but people are used to seeing the compass rows with the north, east, south, west, and so they just think all of them are straight lines going in that direction. And if you're on the equator on a globe, like you said, you could hypothetically go east in a straight line and come right back around to yourself. So. In that model, it seems like east and west are or could be straight lines. But imagine still on a globe, you're near the North Pole, take a few steps away from the North Pole, and someone says, walk to the east. How do you walk? <laughs> Don't you walk in a circle? If you, like you said, if you start walking in a straight line, oh, the east is, um, to the right here. I'm going to start right. walking to the right 90 degrees. Well, a few paces, and how can you call that east anymore? It's southeast. A few more paces, right. and it's just south now. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. How, even on the globe, east and west are circles. Do you, do you know about anything uh, about, like, supposedly these explorers who circumnavigated on foot? across Antarctica or something. Most of them are just, they're going over this this one ice shelf that on the on the globe model, you know, it's kind of like traversing Antarctica because you, you go over a, a little, you know, it's like a peninsula thing and the, the way it's shaped right. or whatever, they kind of go cut across there. But if you look at, at how that actually is on the flat earth, it's it's this tiny little little divot on one random spot of Antarctica because Antarctica is 360 degrees around you. It's not just this tiny ice continent on the bottom of a ball that you can go across. So these people that are just doing little th they're they're so you're here, Antarctica all around. It's got like a little peninsula go out here. They just go across the peninsula. That's it. <laughs> uh, oh, I traversed Antarctica. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I found that to be like, like really weird. Like, why don't you just get in a plane and do it? Yeah, right. Like, why would you jump on foot if you could have, we have technology. Get in, I don't know, like, that doesn't make much sense to me. Like, To make the fake uh, news. I mean, that's yeah. the real reason. The real reason is that they need the propaganda effect. And so to do yeah. that, they have a bunch of different expeditions and whatnot that they've done throughout history until now where they they don't want to do any more because they already have the effects like we all believe them now so there's no reason to you know have people doing trips to the north pole in antarctica and having news stories about them like they did like in the turn of the century the turn of the last um no, 20th century there was a rush to the pole and to antarctica and there was all these expeditions and at that time that was the other time when flat earth was having its renaissance and so this is what shut them up before nasa came along and really shut everybody up the the first thing that shut people up were the expeditions to the poles and they're, they're confirming supposedly the things in the globe model and that's the same thing with nasa that nasa was created to confirm in the public's view the globe model in any way possible that's what they're really doing but um, they'd have you believe they're exploring outer space and finding new front new frontiers yeah 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 oh my god they're so ridiculous like and then, and then i see the iss footage where welcome aboard the iss and they're editing it and you could see how it's you know green screen people are like disappearing into the hallway some guy's grabbing some guy's harness he's not touching him pulling them down like we see all these things and i guess the people who are into it if they do see because i've shown people like hey what do you think of that and uh oh it's nothing I'm like no it's something i want to know what your thoughts on it like this is stupid time for this and then you know like wow i just showed you some some green screen and fakery shit going on over here you don't care Mm -hmm. But yet you'll ask me and call me stupid for, for seeing things and pointing it out. Like, hey, hey, look at look at this, look at this. Like, uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like it's the defense rather, mechanism. Right. Like, look at it, look at it. Right. <laughs> it's know? like that scene and they live. They have this epic fight scene that goes on way longer than any fight scene should go on. And that was the point. <laughs> uh, John Carpenter yeah. put the fight scene in and made it ridiculously long because what he's doing is trying to get them to wear the they live glasses which are these glasses that show you reality that's hidden from the the majority and when you try to get your friends to put on these glasses to see the truth to see the world the way it really is you have to prepare yourself for the longest fight scene in history. <laughs> and that, so that it's a metaphor. The metaphor is what we've been talking about. The metaphor awesome. is that when you're trying to put on these reality glasses for your friends and family, it's it's not like you would like it to be. It's not like you think it might be. It's not like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Eric. That was, I never knew that. I'm so much happier and I'm grateful <laughs> that you opened my eyes to the truth of the world. No. Right. That, or that may yeah, happen yeah. Year, years down the road, which is what happens in the movie. Yeah, eventually the guy wears the glasses and they re repair their friendship and they understand each other again. But before that can happen, it's this drama. It's this fight that needs to happen. That, and what is this fight? It's this unconscious, subco subconscious uh, defense mechanism that people have against or it's like a bias against the the first thing they learned what, whatever the first thing they learned is they've accepted it as true and now you're telling them wait look into the opposite thing i say that's true and they're like oh i got stuff to do with my life <laughs> i gotta go to work in the morning i already had it in my head this way eric i don't want to yeah. change it <laughs> that's effort i got other things in right, my life yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, you know i want to put effort into not this ridiculous shape of the earth subject so i mean I, I get it right it makes sense if you look at it from their perspective the problem is they are adamant in their faulty perspective to a fault <laughs> to a real fault it's like i get it i get right. why you think it's crazy why you think it doesn't matter and you still got to go to work in the morning we can all level with them on that 
problem is they won't yeah. leave from that that baseline. It's like, okay, but but you you do understand right that if the Earth was flat and if the entire world was duped and if all this was true, that it would be important, right? You, you do get that, and usually they can at least accept like, oh yeah. But, and then the big but is that there's no way that's true because all the scientists would be lying, the astronauts would be lying, I've seen the picture, and then they'll just do that, right. and you're not yeah. going to get any further. That's the fight. That's You're trying to put the glasses on, and they're like, I'm trying well, to help here, great... dude. Like, we're friends, aren't we? Like, what is going on? Yeah, it's so true. I didn't think of it like that. But yeah, I saw they live. That's a great uh, movie. Um, it is, yeah. Uh, Rodney uh, Piper, the wrestler. Yep. Right? I mean, yeah. That. Yeah. Great, great movies. Um, almost like reality today, like you said. That's exactly what we're going through. We're yeah. Getting great, more, like, great metaphor. Yeah. Ridiculed and mocked just for talking basically about something that they don't want to talk about. Like, well, this is important to me. So sorry. I'm gonna. <laughs> you're gonna have to hear this because this is very important. Right. So, and um, anybody who doesn't think it's important, I'd like to ask them what is important to them. Then <laughs> my job, my paper right. money, my, my nice car. Uh, yeah, okay, but don't you want to know who you are and where you came from? Maybe there's a there's an idea that way or that way. There's ideas to now that we understand the shape of the Earth, that kind of um, changes how. It is intelligently designed, right? More than the whole space uh, speck of dust in this infinite vacuum of space is hurling through this way, spinning that way. You're nothing. You're nobody. Look at these big gas giants. There's a YouTube video. Like every second, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Like look at this sun. Look at this sun. Like we're this small, minuscule like thing. It's like yeah, well, that people are just like, well, we're nothing. Not we're something. We are definitely something. We are here right now. We're talking. We're, you know, I could feel my, you know, there's so much proof. This is not that. And knowing what I live on now, a stationary plane, you know, that's important. I mean, something created this, man. You know, this is no accident. This is no theory. This is intentional. So there's another potential why for you. When you turn the earth into a globe, you are able to get rid of any spiritual dimension to reality. You can have an atheistic Big Bang evolution worldview where God or any kind of spiritual side of reality is completely removed and everything is explained by material physical phenomena. So, and isn't that where materialist science and mainstream education system has gone in the past 150 years? So, there's another answer. I mean, there's actually a bunch of reasons that make perfect sense why the earth has to be a globe for the nar the current mainstream narrative to work the mainstream narrative of who we are where we came from what this place is where we're going there's a lot of lies built into that that people take at face value and when you present flat earth to them all those lies that they take at face value they just they're like but they're, those are truths to them so they just your, your new thing just can't possibly trump all those other things that would now have to be false to make your thing true. Right. So you're, right. you're just, it, it's a losing battle un, until you realize the only real battle is planting the seed because you can't put those glasses on anybody. It's physically impossible. If, nobody, if they don't want the glasses on their face, they will not be on their face. And yeah. it's the same with the information. You can't cram it into their head, even if you chain them into a room and you know, play Alex Jones videos on repeat 24 hours. Or something. <laughs> they're, not, they're still not gonna, you know, become a conspiracy theorist uh, just because you've done that. There has to be that internal individuation I talked about earlier, where you make the conscious decision that you don't agree with this thing. You're rebelling against the consensus because it doesn't make sense to you personally. And I think that is. is is a beautiful thing that flat earth can do for the entire world is we can all step out of this stream of being npc followers from these experts that have led us for these centuries we all now have an opportunity to realize our own power and to step you know stand in it and 
and never again fall for these kind of lies that only happen when you accept hearsay from experts, you know, supposed authorities, rather than demanding demonstration, demanding empirical, you know, objective facts before you settle your science.